and maybe zoom in on it, we can see that it doesn't take very long to fill that up. So if we're scrubbing through this, yeah, I can also see how it splashes up so much. Coming into this last example that we have here, I've got my timer. I got about maybe 10 minutes to go. I'll try to get through this one click quickly so we're not going over time too much and answering any questions that are still left out there. But free surface, what that does is it models the boundary layer uh, between two immiscible fluids. So that immiscible fluids just means that in any two fluids that aren't ever going to mix, no matter how much, yeah, say in that tank, no matter how much we spin it, we spin them in that tank, they're never gonna uh, blend together and become a homogenous mixture. So, you know, of course we, we know that air and water never mix. Uh, we know that just intuitively, but you know, something like oil and water, if you're doing two liquids, uh, th that could also be handled by this free surface problem. So really great for uh, determining things like fill time or uh, really good for understanding effects of uh, like one of the more common examples is like water sloshing around in a tank, uh, understanding what kind of forces that water is imparting on on the walls of the tank to understand if it's uh, going to start to structurally deform things. Um, so the way that we set that up is we just define an initial condition and uh, say that a valve in this case do kind of like a dam break type of thing where the valve is immediately opening at time zero and then that helps us determine how how much time we need before the we need to close the valve back up so looking at this one i'm going through quickly the setup here in my general settings it's just a checkbox in the general settings to consider that free surface when i do that and go to choose my fluids for the study, it switches it. Yeah, this is where it says that immiscible mixture where I'm choosing air and water in this case. And then for my initial conditions, I've sketched up another like a, just using CAD tools, I did an intersect um, to do a Boolean operation to get just the internal region. I'm saying um, this metering bowl and you know anywhere above that valve is initially filled with, in this case, I just, said it was water, but you know, it could be anything like milk or whatever. This initial condition, I'm just saying that at time zero, this is initially filled with water. And then, you know, based on the way that geometry is oriented here, you can see that valve is open. So immediately it's like that valve is opened and now we're gonna start to see water uh, spill down into the carton here. Um, I've also set a couple of goals uh, just to track the force on the walls of that. So uh, just to show you all, like with that tank sloshing example, we can kind of see uh, how long does it take to, to kind of settle out that force. And, you know, now we're not experiencing so much of that, that gravity force of the, the water crashing into the walls. I'm also just tracking uh, volume fraction of water inside of that carton. So I can see again where that levels out, what, what point in time does that happen? And I've thrown some mesh controls just inside the carton and through the valve there, as well as around uh, the edges of that metering bowl. So uh, just to get these plots pulled in. So what we're looking at here is again, a mass fraction plot. I've changed the scale to be from white to blue. Uh, that blue line is the with it being at 50% means that that is the boundary layer between air and water. So that's telling us where is the, eh, I don't like that one. That's telling us where is the, uh, yeah, where's the line between uh, air and water. And then another really neat one to look at with that, that I was showing on my, on my slide there is this ISO surface. So also on that same scale, anything that's at 50%, that's where you can see it at the very end, it only took 1.26 seconds and we're already overflowing over the edge of that. So when I come into the Transient Explorer on this one, we can again, kind of scrub through that and it takes a second that ISO surface is a, is a difficult plot to show. So it'll take a second to scrub through. I'm not seeing it. Yeah, I might have locked it up here. My computer always tends to have a tougher time when I'm sharing my screen. It, it worked great this morning when I was doing a run through, but yeah, now it's, it's just not wanting to behave. But 
all that we would have been looking at was just this animation again. Oh, there it goes. Nice. So there we can see, and maybe zoom in on it. We can see that it doesn't take very long to fill that up. So if we're scrubbing through this, yeah, I can also see how it splashes up so much. Um, <laughs> coming up pretty high there and you know eventually that water will come crashing down and make a mess all over the floor so yeah maybe starting it from the beginning how, how quickly do we need to close that valve yeah maybe about 0.4 seconds or so it's already pretty full at that point um yeah, if we get anywhere further than that, it starts to splash up. So maybe even a little bit sooner than 0.4 seconds. 